Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to another episode of PyTest Basics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about profiling test duration. So up until this point, we've been primarily concerned with whether or not tests pass or fail. However, there's another metric that we often care about when it comes to tests, and that's going to be test duration, or how long it takes for a test to run. Now, there are a few reasons why we care about this. So one reason is that it can point out where we may have overloaded tests. So we may have just crammed too much work into a single test, and we might be better served by splitting that test into smaller subtests. There's another reason, though, that we might care about this, in that it can show us the slow parts of our software. So it might not be that we've put too much work into a particular test, but it may be that our underlying software that we're testing needs some performance optimization. So there's a number of different reasons why we might want to know our slowest tests. So let's go ahead and start with our example today, where we're going to show off how we can actually get this test duration. So we'll go ahead and open up this test sleep.py. We have a pretty simple example here. So we have a very simple sleep function, which just sleeps for some duration in tens of a second. And then we have our test for our sleep function called test sleep. Now we've parameterized this test um, over range 10 values. So we'll sleep for zero tenths of a second, one tenth, two tenth, et cetera, all the way up to nine tenths of a second. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. And we can first run this without profiling the test duration. So we can run just pytest testsleep.py. And we can see our first test go by very quickly. And then our last ones take the longest, right? Those are the ones that are sleeping for seven tenths of a second, eight tenths, nine tenths, etc. Okay, now let's go ahead and rerun this test with pytest uh, testsleep.py, except this time we're going to say, uh, we're going to use the command line argument dash dash durations. And we can set this equal to some number to get the in slowest tests. So if you just do uh, durations equal to one, we'll get the slowest test. Um, let's go ahead and do durations equal to three, so we get the top three slowest tests in order. So we go ahead and run this again, it looks exactly the same from the start. And then at the very end, you see we get this breakdown of the slowest three durations, and it's exactly as we'd expect, nine, eight, and seven, right? The test that sleeps for nine tenths of a second, then eight tenths, then seven tenths, end up being our three slowest tests. And in fact, we can also do this in parallel, right? So we can still run our tests in parallel. So we'll do dash n is equal to five. And you can see we run these tests in parallel and we get roughly the same result here or exactly the same actually. So we still get our three slowest tests. So we can still parallelize our tests and profile our test durations. The one caveat of course, is that parallelizing your tests may affect your test durations because tests are gonna start competing for resources. But this is a very important thing to be able to see to show off where we might have unbalanced tests or where our software is particularly slow. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, I'll put a link to the PyTest documentation for this particular option from docs.pytest.org below the video. And you can find this and all the other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So you can find this under repositories and under PyTest. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.